In this video, we're going to look at the first of two possible solutions, and there are others actually, to this exercise. Now, this is quite a difficult exercise if you haven't done anything like this before. But what I would say is that, firstly, if you try to do it, that's really the practice that you need. The object is not necessarily to be able to do this at this stage. The object is that you should practice and try to figure out how to do these kinds of things. It is that trying that will cause you to gradually make progress, whether you actually get the answer in the end or not. Secondly, if you've tried to do this exercise and you couldn't manage to do it correctly, you might feel at some point during this video that you've now got enough knowledge that you could actually do it. Maybe that won't even happen till the end of the video. And it's a good idea then to pause the video at that point and have another go at it. So first of all, we've got to ask the user if they're a student, if they have pets, and if they smoke. So let's do that here. So let's call this student and say that's equal to input. Are you a student? Question mark. And let's put y slash n as a hint. And we'll have a little sort of character here. Let's use a colon for a prompt symbol. I'm going to duplicate this. And we want one for pets. And we want one for smoking. So let's say here, do you have pets? And do you smoke? So now when we get these answers back, they're not going to be Boolean variables. We need to convert whatever the user types to a Boolean variable. So let's create some Boolean variables. Let's say is student equals their answer equal to y. So if they enter y, then this will evaluate to true and we assign that value to is student. We could also use the same variable again. We could put student here and there's nothing wrong with using the variable to get some value and then assigning that value back to the same variable, converting student itself into a Boolean value. But for clarity here, I'll just use a different variable. Now we need to do that for the others. So let's say here has pets and does smoke. And now here we need pets and here we need smokes. Now I always recommend if you're a beginner especially, but I also do this to an extent as a professional, or at least I was a professional developer in the past. These days I largely make videos, but I always recommend that you develop a bit of the program and then test it out by printing the values of variables. Because otherwise, if you just write a whole program and run it and it doesn't work, that's quite an unpleasant experience and it can sometimes be hard to figure out where the problem is. It's much better to develop it bit by bit as you go along. So let's print is student and we'll print these others as well. So has pets and does smoke. Let's try it. So we'll run the program. Are you a student? Let's say yes. Do you have pets? I'll say no. Do you smoke? Let's say no. So we've got true, false, false. So that seems to be correct so far. Now the tricky bit is, so one way we can approach this exercise is by combining all these into a single Boolean value. And then we can print the answer as to whether or not they're allowed to rent this property. And there are multiple ways to do this, even using this particular approach, combining Booleans. So I'll try to pick something that's comparatively easy. So first, let's take the case where they are a student. Let's create a variable student can rent equals. Now, how could we set this to true or false using the information that we've got? Well, we want to ask if they're a student. So is student. And then we want to say, and some other conditions are also true. So 
for this person to be a student who is allowed to rent this property, well, that has to be true and some other conditions have to be true. What are the conditions? If you're a student, you can only rent a property if you don't have pets and you don't smoke. So let's say here, and not has pets and not does smoke. So I think that would decide whether they can rent or not and are a student. So let's say print student can rent. Let's test this out. So I run this. Are you a student? That should be, are you a student? Are you a student? Okay, so I'm going to say, yes, I am a student. And do I have pets? Yes. Do I smoke? No. Can't rent it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so are you a student? Yes. Do you smoke? Wait, do you have pets? Let's say no. Do you smoke? Yes. Still can't rent it. Are you a student? Yes. Do you have pets? No. Do you smoke? No. True, you can rent it. And if I say I'm not a student, shouldn't really matter what I type after that. It's going to come back false because they are not a student that is allowed to rent the place because they're not a student. Let's tackle the other case where they are not a student. So non-student can rent equals not is student, so they're not a student. Okay, so if you're not a student, you're allowed to rent this property if you smoke or you have pets, but not both. So let's say not is student and not does smoke and has pets. So this will only be true if both of these things are true. And then we turn that to false with a not. So we're saying they're a non-student who is, who is allowed to rent this property only if they're not a student to start with and it's not true that they both smoke and have pets as well. So let's say print, non-student can rent. So now let's run this and try it out and see if this bit works, the second bit. So if I say I am not a student, Let's say I am a student to start with. I am a student and I don't have pets and I don't smoke. Second bit should be false because this is only for non-students. Let's try it again and say, I'm not a student. Do you have pets? Yes. Do you smoke? No. True. I'm allowed to rent. Are you a student? No. Do you have pets? No. Do you smoke? Yes. Then I'm allowed to rent. But if I say I'm a non-student, not a student, and I have pets, and I also smoke, I'm not allowed to rent. So I think the second bit works, and now we can combine them into a single variable. Let's say can rent equals student can rent or non-student can rent. So if either of those are true, then we're fine. Now let's print this out. So print can rent. And if I run this, okay, and actually I'm going to get rid of these because we don't need these anymore. Okay, let's try this. So are you a student? Let's say I am and I don't have pets or smoke, then I can rent. It'd be nice if I put some text here, actually. Can rent, colon. And let's just convert this to a string. Okay, let's run this. So are you a student? Yes, and I don't have pets and I don't smoke. I can rent. But if I say I am a student and I have pets but don't smoke, can't rent. If I'm a student, I don't have pets but I smoke, can't rent. What about if I'm a non-student and I have pets and I smoke, I can't rent. What about if I'm a non-student and I have pets, but I don't smoke, I can rent. And 
if I'm a non-student, I don't have any pets, I do smoke, I can also rent. I think this works pretty well. Seems to be okay. If I type, see here I type YY by mistake, that's gonna end up being considered false because of the way I've done this comparison. Let's just try that again. So I wanna put in here that I'm not a student. I do have pets and I do smoke. Not a student, I have pets and I smoke can't rent. I think this works. This is complicated, right? It's pretty complicated. I don't think most programming is even as complicated as this, to be honest. And this isn't the only way to do this. So I could have set can rent in a single line by combining all of these conditions together without using these intermediate student can rent and non-student can rent variables. And there are other ways of doing it. I could have broken it down further. I could have maybe combined this into a single variable and so on. So hopefully you see the general idea of this approach. You've got an idea of how this approach works. So if you haven't already written this program, I would suggest having another go at it. Now you've seen how I approached it. If you find yourself just tearing your hair out eventually and you get sick of it and just leave it, you might come back to it later on, even in six months or something, after more practice. But it is definitely worth having a serious go at trying to do this because you'll learn a lot about Boolean variables and how to think in a Boolean logic type of a way. But at the end of the day, if it's just too frustrating, don't sweat it. The important thing is to just spend some time practicing whether you get the answer in the end or not. Eventually, you'll be able to write programs that work, but that can take some practice. So while that's always the aim, at this stage, if you can't do that, I wouldn't beat yourself up about it. Just practice and your skills will gradually improve. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.